Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Keenan Grace. Don't fall for any spam in the comments, but this episode is brought to you by our private Discord server. If you're looking to learn how to do stock options, we just did a live trade where you can watch me trade on the live stream during the market hours, and I just made 50%, aka almost $500 in a few minutes. Now, I'll teach you how to do options. I'm not going to sell you a dream. I'm not going to tell you, oh, this is going to change your life overnight, but I'll teach you a skill that can help you to make money on the way up or on the way down. And also, I will help you to get into our money challenges. We're about to start the 26 week challenge where we just finished that a few months back and all of us have $5,000. We're gonna start this challenge very soon. The link is pinned in the description. I don't want you to miss out. The discord is $10, the $5 section is sold out. But we do gotta get into what's going on in the crypto market family because again, a lot is happening right now that is about to make waves. Now, turn your volume up and we gotta listen to this together because understand, there's something called central bank digital currency that the central bank, the Federal Reserve, and many other governmental entities are trying to push on all of us so that they could get rid of cash, replace credit, replace debit, and have full control of what's going on. And this is gonna make waves in the crypto market if it moves the way that they want it to move. And I'm gonna keep you up to date on that. You ready? Turn your volume up and let's listen to this together. This just dropped from CNBC. Now, check this out. You ready? Here we go. Bankman Fried borrowed hundreds of millions of dollars from FTX's sister crypto hedge fund, Alameda Research, to buy his stake in Robinhood. That's according to this. Hold up. They just said that Sam Bankman Fried, and remember, Sam Bankman Fried is the same exchange, coin exchange, crypto exchange leader and CEO that frauded allegedly, supposedly, hypothetically, everybody out of their cryptocurrency family and is helping to crash down the market. Now, this video that I'm showing you is how they're building their case out so that they could get further regulation. You let me know if you see them trying to build their case so that they could get further regulation in crypto. Let's be clear. There is a level of regulation that is going to be needed in crypto. But you got to think, are they going to overdo it by trying to introduce the central bank digital currency? But again, let's keep it going. And we're going to watch them try to build out their case. You ready? This court document filed the day before SBF's arrest. In it, the FTX founder said he and his co-founder, Gary Wong, borrowed more than $546 million from the crypto trading firm through promissory notes in April and May. They used that money to finance Emergent Fidelity Technologies, the shell corporation that in May bought a 7.6% stake in the trading app Robinhood. Hold up. Hold up. I know some of you have crypto over on Robinhood. And let's think about this because you got to remember, these exchanges, these elite, these the power that be, they got their fingers in everything through shell companies. You've heard of shell companies before. Think of this. You know Google, the company? They're actually owned by Alphabet, and then Google is under it, right? So there are FTX, there's Alameda Research, and then there's many different companies that have their hands in all kinds of things. Let's listen to how much Robinhood that they just said that they own. You ready? And that in May bought a 7.6% stake in the trading app Robinhood. This I don't know if you heard that, but I heard 7.6% stake or around 7%. So then I go and I do the research, right? I'm looking. Let's see. Let's get to it. Let's look at Robinhood. The top 10 owners of Robinhood right here. And it says that Vanguard, which is the second largest asset manager in the world, they own the most at 6%, right? And this is as of Q3. This is as of Q3, 2022. And they're telling us now that FTX, but a shell company picked up 7%. Again, I want you to go and do your own research but they're telling us that it looks like FTX is now among, if not the largest owner of Robinhood, AKA they can see everything going on over there. Again, that's absolutely crazy to me, seeing as how they scammed everybody else. And now they have their hand in another big exchange that retail investors are on. This is where they're sourcing all of their money from. They're getting all of their money from people who put money onto the apps and then they can see where you're buying. They can see where you're selling and they can try to front run you again, allegedly, supposedly, hypothetically, right? Nobody's trying to get sued, but I just want you to just hear this one more time. What percent that they said that they own of Robinhood. In May bought a 7.6% stake in the trading app Robinhood. 7.6%, which if this is verified, that will make them the largest holder of Robinhood because Vanguard is currently the largest holder. The top 10 owners, Vanguard's number one, ARK Invest is number two, 
You got Nico at three and four, and then you got BlackRock at five. But none of them have 7%. And they're just telling us that Robinhood is owned 7% by FTX. But it's looking like it's done with stolen money. So it's looking like the whole top owner of Robinhood is just a complete fraud. But again, you don't do your own research, but we just going to keep giving you the facts like we always do. If you appreciate this family, put a 100 in the chat. Let's keep getting it going. This comes to light as the battle over ownership of about $450 million worth of Robinhood stock continues. Court documents indicate about 56 million Robinhood shares owned by Emergent are currently frozen in a brokerage account. According to this court filing, three parties have tried to get control of those shares, including bankrupt crypto lender BlockFi, an FTX creditor, and Bankman Freed himself, who has indicated he wants to use those shares to cover the cost of his legal bills. Sam Bankman Freed wants to use the money, sell all of his Robinhood shares, and use it to pay for his legal bills. BlockFi lent FTX some money. And they want their money back, right? You cannot trust these exchanges, in my personal opinion, even Coinbase, because you never know what's going on in the background, family. The fact that this man right here, Sam Bankrupt Freed, or scam bankrupt fraud, is potentially the top owner in Robinhood, according to what's going on, according to what we're looking at right now, that's crazy. With stolen money, again, allegedly. Let's keep it going, family. So they said three entities. They said BlockFi is trying to get their money back. So BlockFi... Sam Bankman Freed is trying to use the money that they allegedly stole to pay for his legal fees. And then there's a third entity who I doubt is ever going to see any money. But let's keep it going. Earlier this month, federal prosecutors charged SBF with stealing billions of dollars in FTX customer assets to plug losses at Alameda. Wong pleaded guilty to federal fraud charges last week and is cooperating with prosecutors. Meantime, FTX customers filed a class action lawsuit yesterday against the third entity. So you got BlockFi trying to get their money back. You have Sam Bankman Free trying to use some of that stolen money to pay for his legal fees. And then you got the class action lawsuit. Understand the class action lawsuit. This is generally a lawsuit that the attorneys, the lawyers, whoever, right, the legal team is trying to get everybody's evidence and then they're going to take the large majority of the profits and then everybody who is left is going to get like pennies and drops right they're not really going to get their full money back but again this screws over everybody who was an ftx user right they're not going to mostly get their money back and it's just sad to see it but understand this is going to be used for the regulators to try to say okay it's time for us to step in remember they say that through chaos they come in with the order after it, right? So chaos emerges to order. And we see that the the market, hey, it's a lot of chaos in it, right? And I would imagine that they're letting it happen so that they could come in and swoop down and be the saviors, right? The government can say, hey, look, guys, all of that stuff that was going on, we let you try, but now it's time for us to do it. But let's keep it going. The failed crypto exchange and its former top execs, including SBF, seeking a declaration that the company's crypto holdings belong to them. The lawsuit is the latest legal attempt to claim FTX's shrinking assets. The company is already feuding with liquidators in the Bahamas and Antigua, as well as the bankruptcy estate of BlockFi. Next, Kraken will stop operations in Japan next month as the battered crypto industry continues to consolidate. The crypto exchange made the announcement in this blog post today. So this is point two. The first thing that the regulators are going to look at is FTX and then how FTX even had their fingers in Robin Hood stock. And now the next thing is Kraken. Look at this. Kraken is a crypto exchange. And now they're going to say, okay, look, Kraken, they're shutting down too. Family, please get off of these crypto exchanges, please. What I want you to do is, and I'm not sponsored by Ledger, but I want you to put your crypto into a hard wallet. It's like a USB. Once you order it and make sure you order it from ledger.com, right? Once you order it from there, this is the one that I ordered, the, land, the Ledger Nano X, where I took my Bitcoin and then I took it off of these exchanges, right? I have it on a Ledger. So the Ledger, you could think of it like a USB. But even if you were to lose the USB, it's really on a 24 word code that's connected to the blockchain so that you can always get your crypto back as long as you have that what they call the password key. Right. So now. Again, get off of these exchanges, whether you understand crypto thoroughly or not, you understand you put your money there. So guess what? 
get on a ledger in my personal opinion. And when you order it, they walk you all the way through it like baby steps. So now that has been my personal experience with it. But let's keep it going. Kraken, they shutting down. They say they shut down in, Jan in the Japan operations, and they're saying after the global layoffs, right? So they just been laying people off. That's not looking good, especially after you see all of these other exchanges going down. And I say, even if you're in Coinbase or something like that, family, I encourage you, in my opinion, not financial advice, to get your keys and move everything on a hard wallet. But let's keep it going. Gaining a quote, weak crypto market globally. Kraken will deregister from Japan's financial services agency by the end of next month. The company has been in cost cutting mode lately. And you might remember last month, Kraken slashed more than 1,000 jobs. That's 30% of its workforce. Last, an investor who allegedly. And here we go. The next point, right? We had the Robin Hood thing, the FTX thing. We had the Kraken shutting down thing. And then the next point that they're going to make is about an investor who was front running everybody and scamming that way, again, allegedly. But listen to this, right? And I'll explain it. I'll break it down for you like we always do. He drains trading platform Mango of its workforce. Last, an investor who allegedly drains trading platform Mango Markets of Crypto worth millions of dollars was arrested Monday in Puerto Rico. According to this complaint made public yesterday, Avraham Eisenberg's trades in futures related to Mango's token, MNGO, allowed him to withdraw about $110 million in crypto from the deposits of other investors with no apparent intention to pay them back. This man took $110 million of other people's deposits and started gambling it. And he just got arrested, family. This is something you probably haven't even heard of. Let me know in the comments. Have you ever heard of Mango Markets? Most people, I would imagine, have not heard of Mango Markets, right? This is another example that is probably being overshadowed by FTX. But understand, there's rampant corruption, collusion, and just deceit in these exchanges. You got to watch out. Even if you continue to buy from them, do not hold your crypto on there. I encourage you to get your crypto if you in crypto because it's getting crazy, family. Did you know it was this crazy? You probably didn't even hear about this. Again, let me know if you ever heard of Mango Markets, family, but let's listen. From the deposits of other investors with no apparent intention to pay them back. Authorities say that in October, Eisenberg allegedly used two accounts at the same time to buy and sell futures based on the relative values of Mango's token and the stablecoin USDC. The complaint says that by being on both sides of the transaction, he artificially inflated the price of the token relative to USDC, allowing him to borrow and then withdraw millions of dollars worth of different cryptocurrencies. Hundreds of millions of dollars in market manipulation schemes. Understand this. This is the one of the easiest ways I think you can understand what's going on. Imagine that you had a lemonade stand, right? Let's say that there's a dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about a real dog. I'm talking about a person with bad intentions. And they show up and they take a contract with the lemonade stand. The lemonade stand is new. And they say, hey, the dog comes up. He says, yo, listen, if you start, I know you knew, I know you're not getting a lot of traffic, but if all of a sudden you start to get $10 million worth of traffic, even $50 million worth of traffic, if that happens, then I'll pay you a hundred million dollars, right? So then they say, you know what? That's probably never going to happen. So they're not really even worried about this contract. So then he tells them, all right, then how about we do this? How about if you don't get that kind of traffic, I'll pay you a hundred million dollars. So now what they say is sure. I'll sign up for that contract. So they get paid to sign up for the contract. The dog, he goes in the background. He takes all of these different deposits, right, from all of these different investors. And then sneakily, he comes around and gives them that kind of volume that they didn't expect. Now their business is booming, right? He already got into a contract that he basically bet them that they wouldn't get that kind of or volume or that they would. He would say that they would get that kind of volume and then they're getting it, but he's the one that's causing it. He's the one that's causing them to get all of the volume. So now their, their business is booming. And then they owe him that money because they lost the contract, right? So now that they owe him all of this money since they lost the contract, their business is booming. It's all good. They'll pay him. Hey, it is what it is. It worked. That's what they'll think. But then he comes back, the dog, and he says, you know what? I bet you that your business just 
shuts down out of nowhere. I bet you that all of the clients that you had, all of this money come in, and I bet you it just stops on a dime. Like you'd be you'd be shocked. And if it does happen, then you know what? Let's get into a contract. And then they say, yeah, there's no way. A business is booming like crazy. There's no way it's gonna stop. So then they get into a contract. And then guess what? He goes back in the background because he's the one manipulating and controlling it. And then the contract, all of the money, boom, it just stops out of nowhere. So then they lost the contract on the market going up and then they lost the contract on the market going down. And he just manipulated the whole thing and just took him for everything. So now all of the money looks like it's legal, but in actuality, it's not legal because he's the one in the background making it all happen through market manipulation and a scheme using mango markets. And then he even transferred the money they're saying into other cryptocurrencies and cashed out that way. Family, it's getting crazy out here. You probably never even heard about this, right? This is Abraham Eisenberg. Fam, it's nuts out here. There's so much going on, so much corruption in this game. Him to borrow and then withdraw millions of dollars million. of different cryptocurrencies. Mango negotiated with Eisenberg and Risha settlement to recover about $67 million. Mango, the platform, they said that they negotiated with this man that did that scam, allegedly, right? They negotiated with him and got $60 million back, $67 million back. What happened to the other about $50 million? What happened to that, right? Did he just tuck it in his pocket and it's just, we got to forget about it? Family is getting crazy. It's getting real crazy. Now, according to the complaint, Eisenberg claimed responsibility for what authorities call the market manipulation scheme. Eisenberg now faces commodities fraud and manipulation charges in the U.S. All right, on to our main story. Regulators and lawmakers around the world spent 2022 debating new legal frameworks for the crypto industry. You see what I said? Now to the main story, right? Look at this face. She couldn't wait to get this one out. <laughs> she couldn't wait. The main story is about the regulators and how they're going to talk about, hey, guys, this is what we did in 2022. Now this is what we're going to do for 2023. They were just waiting to get through all of that. So that they could tell you, these are the bad things going on in crypto. There's so much chaos. We're going to need that regulation. We're going to need the central bank digital currency, right? So don't be surprised. This stuff is actually being pushed out in other countries outside the United States. And they already got it going. So I say all of that to say this. You got to make sure you're paying attention to what's happening, family. Or else you're going to be very surprised that the crypto market is crashing down. You ain't going to have no idea why. You never heard of, of mango markets. You never heard of none of this stuff going on, right? You heard of the big dogs, like, doing the billions of dollars in fraud, again, allegedly. Like, saying bankrupt fraud, right? You heard of that. But you don't hear about all of the other little things. But you're going to be hearing about it. And I keep you up to date, family. So if you want to be on a live trace tomorrow, join the options class, any of that, hit the link pinned to the top comment. I'm going to keep you up to date. I got your back. But if you can't handle the heat, woo! Stay out of the kitchen. Consider investing in index funds. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.